A pre-purchase examination is important for both the buyer and the seller. A lot of people, certainly sellers, would probably like to not necessarily have a pre-purchase exam uh, and just the deal go through, but it also protects them a great deal. Uh, if something crops up two weeks from now, they can certainly say, hey, we had a pre-purchase exam. It wasn't there then. It is there now. They certainly didn't find any problem. The pre-purchase exam should be done probably last. In other words, if you're interested in a horse and it's in your price range and you play it and it plays well and then you play it a second time and it still plays well, then set up the pre-purchase exam. Don't set up a pre-purchase exam necessarily on a horse and then spend that money and then find out, oh, you know, this horse is out of my price range or, oh, this horse is, is not suited for me. So, you know, spend your time playing the horse in the degree of polo in which you plan on playing it. Again, if you're playing high goal, don't play with a two goal polo game. And if you're playing in, in a two goal polo player, don't play with a high goal game. Just in other words, and it doesn't hurt to come over first before you even play him and ride him, stick him ball in, find out what kind of horse he is. So you set up the exam. The things that it will tell you, I mean, the more of a horseman you are, the more you have horses and handle your own horses, not necessarily be a horse owner, but a horseman. A lot of my client, my high goal players are pretty sharp at feeling legs and feet and stuff. You know, eyes and hearts and lung sounds are not so much great on. Uh, but number one, the, you know, the horse can get, what we normally do is we have a, just kind of a system that we go through on age, tooth wear. You can tell a lot on a horse by his mouth. You can find old broken bars, big scars on the inside of his cheeks. Even that, you know, I mean, if he's even got some dents in his bar, you know that he's a pretty tough horse, and they probably been playing him in a pillow. Um, he maybe even had a broken bar at one time. If he's got some big gag sores and his teeth are relatively well taken care of and floated, then he's got a stopping issue a little bit. Um, you know, I can tell a little bit over the years and 40 years, I've, I've learned a lot on horses. A lot of times I can feel horses' bars and tell you how sensitive a mouth they have and how nice they're going to handle. The real pointed, narrow, sharp bars, generally a horse has a really light mouth. On the big, rolly bars, on the, on the, generally they have a pretty dull mouth. I mean, that's just a general generalization, but it, it comes in. Um, but it, they go through age, they go through looking at the eyes, see if the horse has had any old problems. Um, you know, the, the, occasionally we'll even vet a horse that he's blind in one eye and nobody's known it because the damage is deep inside his eye and he wouldn't know it on it. It looks pretty normal and he's been able to get around. You know, he plays good on one eye and not, there's some horses that don't play good with two eyes that work, but on one eye he bumps hard on that side, but he's, you know, very willing. Heart, lungs, you know, nobody wants to buy a horse and then most horses that have significant heart murmurs generally have performance issues too, and they've been weeded out if they're congenital or relatively young, happen young, relatively young in their career. Generally, they don't make it into polo, uh, but certainly we know that. We listen to the lung, make sure you don't have a horse with what we call COPD or heaves or wind broke. Um, going over back tenderness, legs are the most important part of the examination. We spend a great deal of time on that. We find old things like old, you know, range of motion, resentment of flexion of certain joints. Um, um, and your vet, just from experience, if he does a lot, unfortunately there's probably not a lot of areas where people do a lot of polo other than here, you know, in some of the bigger clubs. But, you know, you start seeing the normal issues that horses have in polo, and so you say, hey, you know what, we need to x-ray this. Now, a lot of people just want to x-ray everything. And that gets into a little bit of expense, certainly in the hoof. It certainly doesn't hurt anything, but a lot of things that, that you see on that are a little bit off center of normal are not that big a problem in polo. So what that why is that important to a seller? Well the seller wants to know, okay, I even have sellers pay me to vet their horses before they put it up for sale on really expensive ones so they know what they've got. They're not going to be surprised by a buyer. They think they know what they've got. The horse has not ever had any problems, but they don't want to be blindsided by another veterinarian vetting the horse and say, hey, this horse has a chip in his knee. And also, sometimes horses, if you, for instance, have a horse that's attached to thoroughbred, it doesn't, sometimes you'll see some pathology in knees and ankles that happened at early at the racetrack. That's why he's becoming a polo pony, because he had some issues at the track, and so sometimes those tattoos on a little bit of a round fetlock 
that may be losing a little range of motion is worth x-ray. But anyway, nobody wants to sell a horse, deposit the check, and then have an unhappy buyer that comes back to them and wants their money back because their vet said two weeks after he bought the horse that this horse has this or that wrong with it. And he doesn't, then he has to say, wait a minute, when I sold it, it didn't. But nobody looked at it when it sold, so, you know, it does have this now, but he's saying maybe it doesn't have it when I sold it to you. So it protects him as well as the buyer. And it's generally in a written document. You want something written down. Now, I don't like the word sound and unsound. We tend to use adjectives like satisfactory, satisfactory with exception, unsatisfactory with exception, unsatisfactory, temporarily unexamined. The reason is that, and I tend to look at things relative to who's buying it and what level they're playing. Obviously, a minus one player buying a play in club polo is a lot different than a 10 goal or buying it and playing in a 30 goal polo or a 20 goal polo. Um, I, I, I try not to get too much into young buyers, green buyers, buying horses that are ill suited for them because they're not paying me as a trainer to say, oh, this horse fits you. I mean, I may look at some fire breathers for, for a beginner, and you say, I do have a thing on psychological exam, and I'll make some comments on it, and also at the end, and comments in general, saying it's questionable whether this horse's temperament is suited for this buyer. But they get into the realm of, you know, should this guy marry this girl? Hmm. He's too ugly, you know, da 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 da. You know, you get into things that are not medical issues, so. But we do go through a great deal of things, and we take x-rays where they're needed. We also sometimes do routine blood sampling like your doctor might do on your physical, on a CBC and a chemistry. Certainly get a new Coggins when it changes hands. Nothing's more difficult than buying a horse and then 11 months later getting a Coggins and it's positive, and although we hardly ever see them anymore positive. Then it comes, but wait a minute, when was it positive? So the, actually it's pretty clear in the state of Florida says when it's changed hands, you need to get college. So that's why we do pre-purchases. Everybody's a lot happier. It gives you some information. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it certainly is a baseline on what this horse is now that you own it and where it was. If something develops later, you can certainly compare it to where it is now. Is this splint old or new? No, he had it on the pre-purchase exam. It was old then. It wasn't bothering him then. There's not ten, no tenderness. It is bothering him now. The range of motion in his fetlock was, you know, went all the way to his elbow, and now it only it misses the elbow by two inches. So yeah, that's changed now. So that's why we do.